Hello and welcome to Flight with Sin Simon. We're putting together a series of tutorials for VATSIM, given the amount of requests on the channel for people that want help. The tutorial series will be over approximately four to five different videos um, and we'll cover in this particular episode what is VATSIM, how do I sign up, what do I do once I've signed up, how do I use it and how do I file a flight plan. So those are the main areas we want to cover today. So first of all, what is VATSIM? Well, VATSIM is a virtual air traffic simulation network connecting people from around the world flying online or acting as a virtual air traffic controller. It's completely free and it allows aviation enthusiasts to experience the ultimate as real as it gets aviation environment. It's quite fun as well. Um, essential software, you're going to need, clearly, a flight simulator. Now, VATSIM will work with Flight Simulator X, it will work with X-Plane, it will work with FS9, P3D, and it will also work with Microsoft Flight Simulator, the latest version. You're going to need some software as well called a pilot client. There are different variants, something called Squawkbox, FSIN. The most popular is VPilot or XPilot for X-Plane. Um, as I'm a Microsoft Flight Simulator user, everything we will be using today will be focused around VPilot. Just a caveat, this and future episodes have been made in conjunction with Real World Pilot and also an air traffic controller um, from the VATSIM network. Um, it's UK centric, though you can use this tutorial around the world, different regulations or processes may apply. This is based for VATSIM UK. But apart from that, um, let's get on. So, before we can go any further, you need to sign up for VATSIM and you need what's called a CIN. Now, by going to your web browser, typing vatsim.net forward slash join will bring you to the page that you can now see on the screen. You'll see around there the register icon and simply click on the sign up page. You'll need to enter some information. Um, selecting division is, is relevant to where you are in the world. So you go through um, regions. So from here we can go Europe and, and then into UK. Once you've registered, you'll need to wait for your information to be sent. Now this is manually checked by a human, so it will take a little bit of time to come through to you. Once it does arrive, you'll then need to go through an accreditation. Um, and that's to make sure that you understand the basics of flight simulation and some of the things you're going to need to know to fly online. So there is a little exam and you will not be allowed online until you've done that exam. But we find that's really useful actually because otherwise we get people spawning on runways when someone's about to land or, or, or just coming on um, not taking it seriously. So that sim is for people that want to really immerse themselves in the realism um, with real world instructions. So it's important that you know what you're doing. So. Once you've gone through the sign-up process, you'll then need to go through and get accredited. Once you're accredited, you're ready to go on to the next stage. So you're now accredited and you're now signed up. You've got all of your user information. We're going to concentrate the next segment around vPilot as this is the most common um, software used in terms of a flight simulator. Once you've downloaded, we'll go into settings and we will go to network where you'll put your CID and your password, your full name, what you class as your home airport and which server you wish to use. The second um, part is to go to audio and to make sure that your audio device and voice capture device is selected correctly. If you don't want to hear um, the ATC audio effects, put a tick in there. So that's VHF, like the 
sort of noise um, to make it sound more real. And then what's really important is a push to talk button. Now on me, um, I have a button on my flight yoke where I can push to talk to the air traffic controllers and you can set that quite simply inside here. Once you're done on here, you can click OK. And then what we'll do now is jump into Microsoft Simulator and I'll show you how to load into the sim. So now we're in the cockpit, we need to connect to the VATSIM network. For that we're going to use vPilot. First of all, whichever aircraft you're in, you need to make sure that the avionics and battery switches are switched on along with the radio. So for, on, for example, on the fly-by-wire mod, my batteries are on and my external power is on and that's all I've done for now and make sure my radios are on. So into vPilot, we're going to click connect. Now we're going to need to know what our call sign is. Now that is up to you. So let's talk about model matching. What is it and why do we need it? So model matching is where vPilot will scan a file and will load into the sim how everybody will appear. So if you select BAW for British Airways, that is how you will appear to everybody else within the simulator using VATSIM. Irrelevant of what actual skin you have on your simulator, you will appear on the simulator as a British Airways aircraft. The next part is the aircraft code. Now again, you're going to need to know for the type of aircraft that you're, you're choosing to fly, whether you're choosing to fly a Dreamliner or a Cessna 172, the air traffic controller needs to know what aircraft you are. So again, you can Google ICAO aircraft types. And on here, if we have a look, we've got an Airbus A320neo, and my code is A20N. So back to uh, my V pilot, I'm going to call myself an A20N. And there we go, there's my Neo. I'm now going to click connect and I am now connecting to the VATSIM network and will be visible um, to everybody else online. And we are now connected. So the next thing we need to know, what are all these buttons for? And let's just have a quick look. So we've spoke about connecting. So let's go to Lewis, who's a VATSIM air traffic controller, to explain about Squawk Mo Charlie and Squawk Ident. If you have a look back at vPilot, you'll be able to see other functions at the top left hand side. Mode C is referring to the transponder of the aircraft. Now to keep things simple, we'll just say there are two types of modes. Mode Standby will only allow the aircraft to be seen by the air traffic controller as a primary blip only. Mode C or Mode Charlie will allow air traffic controllers to see a four digit code, pressure altitude and other information such as heading speed and the call sign. Now, as pilots, we have to ensure that the transponder is on mode Charlie before entering the runway and getting airborne. Now, we can do that by numerous ways. One is by clicking the mode C button on the V pilot. The other is changing your transponder in the aircraft to mode out, altitude reporting. If you have the ability as well, you could also have TARA. Another way that you could do it is by going onto vPilot, into settings, and under miscellaneous, clicking the box of automatically squawk mode Charlie on takeoff. 
Now, if you do forget to have a Mo Charlie before taking off, it's not a problem. All they do is the air traffic controller will tell you to squawk Mo Charlie. So for an example, it would be Speedbird 500 squawk mode Charlie. Another function of the V-Pilot, if you have a look at the ident button. Now what the ident button does is when you press it, it will send a flashing signal to the air traffic controller around your aircraft. And an air traffic controller will ask you to do this so that you can be identified by a secondary surveillance radar method. Now in the UK, as of the 16th of July 2020, the squawk ident phraseology is not now required, so it will be less common for you to hear that. But keep your ears open because they can always ask you that. And also other air traffic controllers around the world could ask you to do that as well. The phraseology for this would be Speedbird 500 Squawk Ident. Now the next thing you're going to see on here is flight plan. Now uh, there's different two different types of um, flight plans. There are IFR and VFR. Today we're going to concentrate on IFR. So we're going to need to understand how do we build a flight plan. So let's have a look at that next. So there are a number of tools available to help you build a flight plan. Some are chargeable, some are free, some work really effectively, some not so effective. Simbrief is pretty much becoming the uh, flight simmer's standard to use as it works really effectively and will automate some of the tasks as well for you. So, show you how to fill this in quickly. This isn't really a tutorial on Simbrief. Um, there are other tutorials around, um, but this is just to, to do a basic flight sim, um, that sim flight plan that you can use straight away. So we are going to be BAW, as we've said before. Our flight number is going to be 500. We'll be departing Birmingham, which is EGBB. And we're going to fly to um, Edinburgh, which is EGBB. G B H. Aircraft frame. Now you're not going to find the Neo on here. They haven't added it yet, so the closest to it is the A320. We will select. Select whether you need pounds or um, kilos. Because I'm on Microsoft Flight Simulator at the moment, they only work on pounds or gallons. And I'm just going to click Generate OFP. And I'm going to click Yes. That's now going to generate my flight plan. And again, on this particular um, tutorial, I'm not going to go through flight plans. And we will do a separate one on that. So, on the menu at the top, you will see something called an FMS downloader. If you download that software, and now I'll load up um, that software here. This is called the um, Simbrief downloader, and we'll download that flight plan. So what I've got selected on here is the PDF document of the actual flight plan. For different types of aircraft, I've got different selections. You need to make sure if you're on Microsoft Flight Simulator, you've got the FS2020 selected. But as we come to the bottom, you need to make sure you've got B-Pilot selected. And if it is linked to the original default location and you haven't changed it on installation of B-Pilot, then that is already linked in place from there. All we're going to do is click export. That will now download our flight plan from Birmingham to Edinburgh. And we will click close and we don't need this anymore. And for now, we don't need this anymore. So, jumping back into the pilot. We're now going to click the flight plan option. We're going to click clear. I'm going to click load and I'm going to point to that location and if you have a look at the very top here is our flight plan. We double click on here this now says that we're doing an IFR flight plan from Birmingham to Edinburgh with Manchester as our alternate, our departure time, how long we think the flight's going to take, the fuel availability we've got, all of this has been calculated um, by Sibbrief, our cruise speed, our altitude, our actual route and any remarks. All you need to do on here is click File Flight Plan. 
that will go through and now that's done the air traffic controller that's on clearance duty will be able to see that so the next thing we want to talk about is what do we do next who do we call so we're just going to talk around some of the hierarchies now of the way the batch sim structure work so who do we call other than Ghostbusters sorry about the dad joke so let's pass over to Lewis who will explain more around who to contact when and why the next thing we're going to talk about is who are we going to talk to but before we do that we'll go over the structure of air traffic control if you have a look on your vpilot you'll be able to see there'll be clearance delivery ground tower arrivals and center now delivery issues IFR clearances and to make sure that the pilot's flight plan is valid. A ground controller handles all the aircraft movements including pushback and taxi. A tower controller has the responsibility of taking off and landing on the runway and any crossing clearances. An approach controller or radar controller vectors aircraft for arrival to make sure that it is safe to approach the instrument landing system. An en route controller issue climbs and descents to their appropriate runway or to their appropriate airway. Now if you were to have a look at vPilot, you will be able to see on the left hand side which frequencies and which units are online. Now as it is VATSIM, not every controller will be online at every single minute. But if you was to have London Control on, which would be known as Lima Oscar November underscore Charlie Tango Romeo, they are offering ATC throughout the entire of London's airspace, top down as it is known. So they would be a radar, tower, ground and delivery. But London can be split up into different sections. London North London Central, London South and London West. London Central and London South can be combined into one frequency. But please have a look at vPilot to which London section is online. If you was in Manchester and only London South was online, they will not be able to provide you a service. And we can now move on to radar units. We're here today at Birmingham, so if Birmingham radar was online, they would be able to provide you a radar service. Going in top down onto tower, so they can issue takeoff and landing clearances. Ground, they can give you taxi clearances and pushback. And onto delivery, they will give you your flight plan clearance. Now, if no ATC is online, then we have a frequency on a VATSIM known as a Unicom. The frequency you should know is 122.8, which you would self-declare yourself pushing back, either via voice or by text, preferably both, because we can communicate via text and voice on VATSIM. You would communicate that you're taking off of a particular runway and communicate with any other aircraft that could be coming into your airport in this case Birmingham. So that really concludes part one of the tutorial and what we wanted to cover today was what is VATSIM, how do I sign up, um, how do I get online, how do I use it, how do I file a flight plan and I'd like to think we've covered that um, and there's any areas but if you've got questions please do leave them in the comments and we will answer them for you. Coming up, uh, the next video will be, okay, I'm on the ground, I'm at a gate, and I need clearance, how do I do it? Um, and we will also then cover ground movement to take off all in the next video. So hopefully um, you enjoyed. If you've got any comments or feedback, please leave them in the commentary, and uh, we will see you very soon. Goodbye.